What's up, guys? Welcome to DeFi Top Signal, episode eight. All right, dudes. What we got? Actually, guys, it's it's just me and Abs today. Uh, today's video, we're going to be going into a couple of different uh, topics and narratives to look at right now. Um, Abs is going to be going over NFTs and stacks, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about Arbitrum. We're going to be chatting back and forth. But Abs, where do you want to start, man? Yeah, let's uh let's go to Arbitrum since that's the hot topic of the week, right? We have the airdrop coming down on uh on the on this Thursday, which is the 23rd. It's very exciting. Nice little stimmy check. It's going to hit our hit our banks, right? <laughs> Proverbial <laughs> uh web3 wallets, but um so I think the hot topic of of Arb just off the top, I think we can just start jumping in on the uh Arb IOU which is uh uh, is a contract that's on Hotbit, right? And correct, correct me if I'm wrong. It's currently trading around uh, around ten or nine or eleven dollars at this point. Yeah, it's around nine bucks right now. Yeah, and uh, so the it's it's interesting how these these exchanges kind of uh, come out before the token release. It's basically this this contract. It's it looks just like a it's not spot or anything like that because that's you know that's obvious. It's it's just basically like a Another product that the exchange just dishes out and says, hey, here's an IOU and we'll see where the ARB token or the ARB IOU um, could be traded around, right? So it's, it's a speculative, I can't even say that word. It's a play that, um, that people can trade back and forth to see if the ARB token would be you know, fairly priced around this range or that range. And it seems to me that it's holding this nine to twelve dollar range, um, and it's. I think it's been trading for the last four or five days. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. this is this is what I'm going to go out on. I, I've already had several uh, questions about it. People are like, "Oh, well, look, ETHW or not ETHW? Our um, Ar- Arbitrum IOU is trading trading around nine dollars or around ten bucks, whatever it was." Um, I say the best thing to do is just look at ETHW. ETHW had the same thing. They had a little IOU token on in exchanges just for a little walk back in history. This thing was trading around $30 to $50, just extremely volatile. And then as soon as ETHW token dropped, it, the token price leveled out around 6 bucks. You can look at the chart and you can see it literally just tank. Um, me, personally, uh, from our last video, giving out those different price targets, I still feel pretty strong about the $0.75 cent to $1.50 price target for the Arbitrum token, mainly due to the market cap TVL ratio. Now, obviously, that doesn't mean that's going to be the trading price of the token, but that's just what I'm seeing the valuation at using comparative tokens like Optimism. Yeah, so um, didn't... And I'm just trying to I look, try to look at this on uh, Coin Market Cap for a second here. But did didn't uh, Optimism have an IOU just like how Arb is having right now? When b- before the Arbitrum, sorry, the um, the Optimism token came out, because I did see I somebody talking about that. I don't think they did, but I wasn't following it closely enough, so there may have been. The reason why I don't think there was one is because when Optimism talked about their airdrop like hey do this this and this they basically just announced it it wasn't as um delayed as arbitrum like we've been talking and speculating about the arbitrum airdrop when i say we the crypto markets for like months i mean everyone's like yeah use arbitrum airdrop coming air two months later three months later four months later five months it's coming it's coming i mean we even had like the little nft um uh, what was it, NFT Galaxy, or uh, I can't even remember what it was called, and speculating that was part of the airdrop. Now, if you think about it, that wasn't even taken into consideration with the airdrop. If you had some additional NFTs, all that was, it wasn't wasted work, but I mean, it's just like, that's that's how long we've been waiting for this airdrop. Um, they suspended the Odyssey, that's what it's called, the Arbitrum Odyssey, uh, because like, of course the bear market came around so we're like yeah we're not gonna do this right now (laughs) and all kinds of garbage but um yeah this is this has been in speculation for a long time so i know there's a lot of hype behind it whereas optimism is more like hey we're gonna have an airdrop we're gonna do the optimism collective um let's do this in a week and they basically just dropped it 
Yeah, I, I don't understand. <laughs> There's a lot of different price predictions that are that's coming out with Arbitrum in the last week. It's really exciting to see. The low end I've seen was sixty cents. Um, the high end I've seen was fifteen dollars. <laughs> fifteen dollars. <laughs> let's, let's talk about. Yeah, let's, let's talk let's about just call that. it a hundred, man. <laughs> let's talk about that, that for a second. So I'm not sure if you follow um, Salazar.eth on uh, Twitter. But uh, he sent out a, a little thread this morning at 6 a.m. Uh, Eastern. And basically, he said that so many price predictions on CT for the Arb airdrop um, token. And for, but for this, for the, it would be the realist backed with data analysis and mathematics. $15 prices range here. And then he talks about the thread and why he thinks that a $15 ARB token, right? The price could be ranging around this area. And so he goes deep into it. I'm not going to talk about it, but you can kind of ch uh, check it out here. It's his latest tweet and uh, the reasons why he believes that uh, it could be around this range. I mean, I I'm all for it. I love it. <laughs> I, I, I it won't argue with it. I mean, by all means. Yeah, but the, so just to talk about this really quick, um, there's a lot of folks that are dropping, dropping knowledge about how the tokenomics will play uh, a huge role um arbitrum over i think a year and i'm talking and i'm kind of thinking about this as i was reading it on i think late friday or saturday um two days ago but i'm doing this by memory so i believe the optimism token um that has a quarterly type of inflationary period right so every every now every quarter or so the uh the optimism token you know basically inflates because it's dispersed and all that um i think i did see like the first uh year of the arp token being in you know being basically being released that first year there's zero emissions there's zero um unlocks um the first unlock is going to be sometime after the first full year did you did you see that as well I, I didn't see that, um, but I, it, what really depends is what's going to happen with the treasury. Um, mm -hmm. Similar to optimism, how you can farm that token, um, like using the different protocols. I, I know the Arbitrum um, treasury is going to be used to incentivize uh, people to have transactions on the chain and incentivize network at activity uh, by allowing yields in DeFi. So I'm sure there is going to be a form of inflation for that. I, I don't know 100%, um, but I did drop a full video kind of explaining um, like the, the token allocation for the Arbitrum token, as well as uh, where the token distribution is going to go. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not really sure um, on the token unlocks, but I'm, I'm sure there is going to be... Um, some incentives given out because if not if there's nothing for a year people are going to get kind of bored crypto is it it, it goes where the shiny object is at which is yeah free and money. yeah and there's yeah exactly there's going to be a, a bit essentially within the arb ecosystem and the arb token itself it's it's essentially going to inject a billion dollars plus at least a billion dollars into the ecosystem now, this stimmy check is going to be very important because there's going to be a lot of price appreciation as we've seen already, right? We've seen a lot of these tokens going off um, over the last, you know, since the announcement last week. It's it's going to be very interesting times because this is going to set off a lot of uh, price volatility. Um, I mean, I'm hoping it's it's... My bet is that is obviously it's going to appreciate every single asset across the board, but but for how long, right? Um, and will that ARB token be held by majority of the folks that are getting those airdrops? Or are they going to essentially dump it? So there's a lot of pros and cons that I'm seeing. Um, it's a... Uh, I don't know what to make of it. I'm kind of back and forth with what I'm going to do with my, my airdrop. Um, but there's... And then, you know, talking about this with Noah last week, Noah Seedman, um, he's his take was that he's basically taken the same page in the same direction as optimism airdrops, right? Optimism, optimism does not use the OP token as gas whatsoever. It's just a governance token. Um, the same rules applies here 
with the ARP tokens because it's not used as gas. It's they're still going to maintain that ETH gas, uh, you know, moving forward. And I don't think there's anything that is going to change that unless there's a huge announcement or upgrade. I don't know. But as for now, ETH will remain the gas. Um, but Noah basically said flat out last week during the last episode that he's just going to, if he gets it, right? If he ever, <laughs> I wish I don't know if he played around with that ecosystem or not, but he didn't allude to the fact that he's getting one or not. But if he had the ARB token airdrop, he said he'd dump it immediately and just move on to the next. Yeah, yeah, it's it's mainly just for governance. I mean, potentially you can give like a narrative like optimism with, with Curve, but I mean, it, it's still all speculation. I mean, he even mentioned that in the um, video as well. Um, but for the Arbitrum token, I, I know a lot of people, so, well, not a lot, but some may have gotten airdrops, some may have not. Uh, they're probably thinking, what are some plays? Um, me personally, I'm still not going to uh, play the Arbitrum narrative. I already have enough exposure, so I'm not looking to buy into other tokens and get more exposure. But if you are, um, the best thing to do is look for a uh, high TVL, well, actually a low TVL to market cap ratio. What I mean by this is the more TVL that's inside that DeFi protocol, it's likely going to get more, not likely, it will be getting more of a distribution of the ARB token. Um, there's like a, a nice little infographic. I put it on the last video, but you can find it on Twitter as well from Nansen AI. It basically shows the distribution between different protocols. And for the most part, a big chunk of it is going to be going to things like Radiant Capital, GMX, uh, Treasure Dow Magic, um, just different things to keep in mind with that. And there's a Twitter thread by DeFi Moki. And on this one, he actually uh, had a pretty good breakdown of some of the different projects like Camelot, Solid Liz, um, Zyberswap, Ramses, Xcal, Alien Phi, Sterling. Uh, there are a couple of more, but these were just a couple of uh, DEXs that he added inside a little spreadsheet. And in my opinion, the reason why Camelot is getting the most appreciation is because it has the lowest monthly inflation out of all the protocols I just mentioned. So the price to TVL has for Camelot is 0.44, which means that the um, the TVL is it's actually over a hundred million now, and its market cap is around 40 million. So that's why it has that 0.44 because the ratio of the TVL to market cap, and the inflation for that thing is is only 0.23 percent because most of the tokens that are farmed is in XGrail, which is basically a locked version of the Grail token. Then you have something like Sliz which has a 13.4% monthly inflation, which is, a little, which is a lot, 45% for Zyberswap, 5% for Ramses. And just looking at that, if you have 5%, 45%, that means that there has to be that many additional buyers just to keep the same price as long as, they're, like, as, long as no one sells. So you have to have an additional 5% coming in to buy up those additional tokens. And then you also need to have additional money coming in in order to pump the price. That's why Camelot took off because it only needs 0.23% of its market cap. So what is that? It's, it's less than a million bucks. Yeah. Uh, or yeah, it's, it's, it's less than a million bucks in um, buy pressure that they need to have coming in in order to simply just pump it. <laughs> Because the, the, there's only 0.23% of inflation coming in. So if you're playing some of these low-cap Arbitrum um, tokens, look for ones that have a low inf inflation and obviously a lower market cap. A couple of them that are out there that I've just seen going on Twitter, um, I'm not really messing with this. Um, I don't even know what's in, what its inflation is, but I've seen a lot of people talking about WINR or winner. Not playing it. Don't really know much about it. I know it was on Camelot's launch pad and it's probably extremely hyped and it's probably mainly just doing well because liquidity is flowing in and everyone's talking about it. Usually when everyone's talking about it, that's a recipe for getting dumped on. Uh, then you have Lodestar. Lodestar basically has like no inflation. It's just a dead DeFi protocol that was exploited three months ago and people pumped this coin and it went from uh what was it yeah 
50 cents to a buck 77 in a matter of two days. Um, yeah. And then you have Levy, uh, which is basically a little Arbitrum meme coin with utility. Uh, it's basically a overlap of GMX. And it's basically a dude who is trading on GMX and giving revenue share for the Levy token holders. Then you have something like uh, Sparax or, and um, what is their token? Not SUSD. It's called SPA, S-P-A. It's mm -hmm. basically uh, like a algorithmic or algo stablecoin, whatever you want to call it. Um, similar to, uh, it, it, it does have some backing to it. So it's like fractionalized algo uh, with the SPA token. But that, it does have some inflation um from its lp farms but i mean it is going to be a reflexive token so if it has a nice flywheel kicking into play that could be um something that does well and then the last one uh that i actually like is cap finance uh cap um if you look at these stats they just launched v4 they at well, i think it was two days ago they did like 60 million dollars uh in daily volume um on average, they're doing like 35 million, but like let that sink in. The token market cap of that thing, there's no inflation. The market cap of the full FTV of the cap token is around 33 to 35 million. Its average daily volume, like for the past few days, because V4 is at 35 million. It's had a one to one ratio. Now let's compare that to something like GMX. GMAX FTV is like 800 million, and it does about, on average, maybe 400 million a day. Gains Network, on average, does about 120 mil. The market cap, 300 million. Um, Quinta, Quinta's fully diluted valuation, what was it, like five? No, maybe like 400 mil. And its average daily val um, volume is like 150 to 200. That's that's like the difference. Cap is more than one to one or whatever, 1.05, whatever you want to call it. And GMX is like 0.5 or Gains Network is like 0.3, 0.35. So the ratio is just, it's, it's pretty good. And there's no inflation. Whereas both gains, well, I mean, you can, you can consider gains deflationary if it's doing really well in volume, but it also could be inflationary if, um, traders are extremely profitable. Anyways, I'm, I'm ranting now, um, but yeah. <laughs> no, no, you dropped a lot of alpha there. I, I just wanted to say that there, on Spearex, there's a rumor that DJ Aoki <laughs> was the uh, was an investor in that project. So that's interesting, <laughs> if it's true. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I got a bag of it. I'm wait. Oh, one more is Plutus. Plutus is like the convex on Arbitrum, um, mm -hmm. but it's pretty inflationary. But I mean... A lot of the tokens are locked, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you mentioned uh, magic at all. Oh, in, yeah. In I, didn't, token. I didn't even, well, I can't really consider that a low market cap, though. No, it's magic. not, but um, it's it's actually an interesting play because magic is... I got a big has... bag of magic. Oh, do you? <laughs> <Pump it. laughs> yeah, so magic has appreciated, um, it was one of those... As BTC was rising the last, over the last like five, seven days, Magic actually kind of was in lockstep. Um, whereas all the other alts were were somewhat red and they were just kind of trading flat. Um, it's interesting because the NFTs, because you know, I think it's basically playing off of that uh, the ARB uh, narrative. So. Um, they're small brains. There's a, this NFT collection that's called Small Brains. Um, basically, the floor has changed over the last seven days by 72%. So it literally went up close to $1,000 for each NFT. Um, and now it's sitting at basically close to $2,000. So that's it, 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 the price appreciation for that, like literally went from 0.66 ETH. All the way now, I think it's at like 1.1 to the, the high was 1.25, I believe, um, which is just insane gains because Small Brains is actually one of the flagship NFTs that first came out for um, the ARB uh, uh, ecosystem. 
It's very interesting play. I, I like the art. It's it's fun, right? It's it's community driven. I'm not sure if there's any utility in this, but yeah, uh, yeah, there 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 is. I'll, I'll get into that. Um, okay, I, yeah. I, I have the bullish case for it. Yeah, go ahead, take it. No, no, no finish with the NFTs. Like I'm, I'm actually, I'm liking this because I, yeah. I don't dig too deep into NFTs. Yeah. So um, then you have uh, also uh, Legion Genesis as well. Legion Genesis is one of those projects that, and I think Kong's. Uh, if you don't, if you don't know NFTs, Kong's is like a big, big NFT person, and his, you know, he's got c- uh, Cubs. He's got the the Genesis MVP Genesis collection. It all looks like a pixelated kind of thing. That's that's their theme. Um, and they, he actually made a big, big purchase in Legion Genesis about two and a half months ago. He purchased a bunch and he staked it into their platform and he was yielding a, a, a ton of magic tokens. Um, they were dishing out, I believe close to, I think at 85 to like a hundred percent plus it's boosted and all that. Um, so if that's and a crazy play, the NFTs, right? Yeah, this is staking it. Yep. And mm-hmm. then with Legion Genesis, those are considered the essentially the the Gen Zeros, um, the Gen Ones. Um, you could actually spawn the Legion Auxiliaries off of the Legion Genesis. So you have like a summoning period, like once every I believe seven days. Correct me if I'm wrong, Drake. But uh, that's the general um, like how it is. And so you would then take those Legion Auxiliaries, go questing with these guys. It's a whole, there's a bunch of material and a bunch of um, content on this on, on YouTube, which was very just insane. I was really close to buying these, these Genesis um, about, you know, four or five months ago, but, and then I saw Kong's do it and I'm like, well, did I miss the boat? Because he's making so much money every single month and he's taking that money. He's either buying real, you know, uh, other NFTs like blue chips and staking these i don't know it's just insane um how much how much magic this this person is going to be you know yielding month after month so that's uh that's a different play there but you know generally i wanted just to bring up small brains um there's another project out there too small bodies <laughs> there's one percent <laughs> listed and that over the last seven days that floor appreciated um 153 percent the floor seven days ago was um a hundred magic, which was around one hundred and seventy nine dollars. Uh, and today, as we speak, it's four hundred and fifty two dollars. And the magic magic tokens uh, uh, is two hundred and fifty three. So one hundred magic tokens to two hundred and fifty three appreciation. It's just there's a lot of going on in this ecosystem in terms of NFTs, the tokens itself. You already covered that. But um yeah, if you have uh, if you have that staking mechanism for small brains, like let me know because I actually didn't. Um, I do know that there was some type of mechanism, but I didn't look into it deep enough. That, that's what I was gonna ask. Um, what's the what? Why would someone be incentivized to stake this NFT? Like, I get well, not why. Uh, obviously, they're getting magic tokens, but why is Treasure Dow wanting people to stake their NFT? I think they just want to because they're looking at, and I'm thinking that the way that they are structuring this, the tokenomics and the NFT like aspect of this, is that they kind of taking the the page out of what uh, Yuga Labs is doing with their board apes and mutant apes and kennel and all that. So when you stake those um, NFTs, you get to earn ape tokens, and so it's a high incentive where people delist and then they stake it to earn ape tokens, which is you know I think it's trading around four or five dollars um, at this point. But um, yeah, I mean, you're you're sitting here earning this these these tokens, and you know you're incentivizing these people, these holders, uh, rather than just holding the NFT and not having any type of you know incentive that's tied to it at all. I believe Trove um, is doing this uh, across the board, and they're definitely doing it with Legion Genesis. They're definitely doing it with their Gen One, which is. Legion Auxiliary, but I don't know about the small bodies. This is actually what I've seen just now. Uh, I, I I do think that there's some type of small brains. I'm sorry I don't have that information at this point, but um, yeah, I think they're they're just they're earning as they're they're earning magic tokens over time just by staking. You know, it's it's actually a great way just to earn passively magic tokens. So staking is only available for the magic nfts like part of that ecosystem so i couldn't stake like a crypto punk or something no yeah exactly you okay have to that go... makes sense now that yeah. makes sense now i understand yep. 
Yeah, um, and I and I do have these beacon to- uh, these beacon founding characters. I have those, but I don't. I don't believe you can um, you can earn uh, by staking it. But the the twist with the beacon founding characters is that I minted two of these back in the day, which was probably August right of twenty twenty two. The idea here is that you go through these like uh, these single c- in a cage, uh, not cage, um, in a cave, and you do you go through a run through, and if you succeed. Because you have like these like skeletons that are attacking you, and if you succeed under a certain time frame, you get to open up these uh, these treasure chests where they're filled with a lot of uh, different types of you know rare, common, uncommon type of uh, items, and then you can sell them for magic tokens. Like you can transact and get your hey, I just went through this cave. I actually have this this rare or uncommon you know type of uh, item that I just picked up. Who wants it? I'm going to list it for you know, 20, 25, 30 magic tokens, who wants it? And literally they're transacting in magic tokens and it incentivizes you as the player to continuously play this, right? <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. yeah. Interesting take. Spe- speaking of one of the magic plays, um, you, I don't know if you heard about it any, but uh, the second, um, someone told me about this, the second, like the number two game on the magic um, or treasured out ecosystem is called Battlefly or G Fly. Um, just looking back at it again, this thing's pumping. Um, it's, it pumped uh, from March 11th from 250 to over. No, it's not eight dollars anymore. It retraced. It's like seven bucks right now. Um, I mean, I, I'm just looking at it. The the game looks kind of cheesy, but <laughs> um, the thing's definitely taking off. But let's go. I, I'm going to talk about the bullish case for Magic real quick, and this is this is mainly why I hold the Magic token. Um, I'm not really looking into the NFTs much. I mean, sure, there is more alpha to be had there, but there's also uh, some more wreckage to be had there if you pick the wrong one. Um, I look at Magic like the ETF. If their NFTs do extremely well, Magic will do extremely well. But here's four reasons why I'm extremely bullish on Magic. First. It has all the infrastructure for a new NFT project to launch. So if a NFT project has to um, release its project, what it has to think about is creating a NFT marketplace, marketing costs, and just additional features involved. Like uh, if you go in an example of this is DeFi Kingdoms. They basically had to create all the different uh, points for it. They had to create liquidity for their NFTs, for their token. They had to market their own selves. There's a lot of costs involved with that. And basically, Magic allows the NFT projects to do what they do best and do it well and let Magic handle the rest, which is like your marketing, NFTs, uh, like creating liquidity for them, um, getting your name out there, uh, having um, branding. There's a lot of different things that people don't factor in when you're launching an an, an NFT. Second, um, this creates exponential growth by allowing interoperability between other games and other NFTs. Because they're all in this magic token, if people are trying to sell out of your NFT into another, they can simply use the magic token as the underlying mechanism to create this quote-unquote swap. Whereas if I have a crypto potato and now I want a little pudgy, what I have to do is I have to go on OpenSea, I have to sell my potato, and then I got to go buy a pudgy. Whereas with something like Magic Swap, I sell it for Magic and it's already in the Magic token. And based with or because they have the Magic Swap, it could be like a seamless swap to where you're simply just trading these different NFTs or you simply just have liquidity because it's pegged or paired in the Magic token. Now I get you have ETH as the underlying asset for these NFTs on the uh, different platform. But the liquidity is not there because it's um, fractioned throughout different ecosystems. Um, Magic is also cross-chain. Uh, the like treasure down the ecosystem, it's going to be cross-chain and multi-chain, so it's not just going to be on Arbitrum. Um, again, this is basically like the ETF for uh, several of the different GameFi and NFTs that develop on the Magic or treasure out ecosystem. So just something to uh, keep in mind with that. And then, of course, like I already mentioned, uh, Magic Swap, creating the NFT liquidity. 
so much to talk about with Arbitrum. Shall we move over to Stacks? <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah, so Stacks, I've actually done a deep dive. I've been looking at this over the past uh, week or so, and just decided to take the plunge. Um, and just to, just to tell you guys the pros and the cons of what I've experienced so far. Um, so what is Stacks? Stacks is a Bitcoin layer for smart contracts. Like, get that. Understand that because it's 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 for in my eyes I think that's bullish because BTC is actually like the the gold and you know ETH is obviously the the number two uh, one two punch you know with with BTC and ETH but I think that something like a layer and uh, that's built on top of uh, uh, a, a Bitcoin as a layer as a Bitcoin blo- on the Bitcoin blockchain is I think it's going to be very very bullish like we're in the past couple of weeks ordinals has been taking off. Uh, and these are ordinals are basically um, NFTs, uh, inscriptions in built, you know, um, inscribed into uh, each Satoshi, which is just another added layer of complexity there. But stacks, it uh, basically will enable smart contracts and uh, have the ability to create dev- developers can have ability to create uh, decentralized applications on there uh, to use Bitcoin as an asset and settle transactions on the Bitcoin blockchain. Uh, and so I think there's uh, some some traction here. So as B- as BTC has been kind of like, you know, been going up, uh, I think it's almost close to 50% over the last uh, se- uh, seven to 10 days. Um, you've seen stacks, STX, gone up in lockstep. Um, it's very bullish in my eyes because... Um, you know, you, you have this opportunity to build on top of BTC and everyone typically would trust BTC. You know, the maxis love it, right? The BTC maxis love it. Um, and it, it's, I, I actually didn't hear about this until when BTC was, you know, I think that, the, I think for some reason it, it went into the Chinese narrative and a bunch of those tokens went, when the, the Chinese narrative kind of, kind of like was going up and I saw STX, I'm like, what, what is this, you know, token going up? Like, like crazy. Um, so in terms of price, STX has gone up from the low price in uh, December the 30th. I believe that it was around 20 cents. Yeah. Now it has appreciated 550% to date. And yeah. it's sitting at a dollar. It's like 15. a lever play. It's like a lever play on Bitcoin. Yeah, it's it's huge. Um, it's available on Binance, Coinbase, Kraken, Upbit, KuCoin, all that. Um, I, I, I decided to go into it. I decided to just to try the smart contract a little bit. And so, yes, those are all pros. Um, and here's the cons. The con is that it takes every single transaction that you will interact with. The, um, each transaction will typically take anywhere from 10 minutes to 30 minutes. This is not fast. This is not instant. You're going to be very impatient because, you know, you've been using Arbitrum and, you know, these other, you know, <laughs> other chains, Phantom, ETH and all that stuff. This is slower than all of them like, by, you know, tenfold, by, you know, a hundredfold maybe. Uh, but that's the, this is like early stages. And so if you have the patience to wait for these transactions to go through and, you know, note that the TVL of stacks at this point is around 35 to 40 uh, million. If you believe, and I, I'm in this camp, if you believe that this uh, that this ecosystem will eventually thrive based on the you know the understanding and the bullishness behind uh, BTC, then there there's something big here potentially. I'm sniffing it out, uh, and I I just you know threw in a, a stack of change or whatever it is, and and see what what the heck happens because I, my conviction is that based on BTC going up. Um, over the next, you know, this is the bear cycle. Right? I still, I mean, you know, I, it's it's debatable because BTC has um, closed the weekly um, candle above a certain very bullish level. So, are we now in a in a, a start of the bull cycle? You know, uh, maybe. But my conviction is that I went on to Alex Finance, um, or sorry, AlexLab.co uh, co. And I just decided to add liquidity there uh, because it's the leading decks, and the the farms are you know it's it's okay it's it's not that bad it's around twenty five twenty two percent for the STX token paired with 
um, uh, with stacks. I locked it up. Typically, I don't like locking up my tokens. I don't like locking up my LPs. I've usually gotten burned on it, but <laughs> but when you lock up a certain frame uh, for a certain time frame, the APRs are obviously much more juicier, right? And so I said to myself, you know what? I- I'm going to lock it up and see, you know, see if this price prediction will, you know, if my conviction will pay out. I'm I'm in that camp. I'm I'm bullish on this ecosystem. I'm bullish on stacks. I'm not bullish on the uh, the settlement times for each transaction. But, there's, good, there's good there's good news on that in about oh, a month in about a month it's going to be they're going through a network upgrade so it's going to be much faster is that um, the nakamoto yeah it's, it's something like that um okay. it, it's going to be much faster um and I, I agree with you like i think we talked about stacks a couple of episodes ago um but the thesis on stacks that i really like is there's no competition um it's really the only one on Bitcoin. You don't have to deal with, is it Avalanche? Is it Binance Smart Chain? Is it going to be Polygon? It, it's literally <laughs> Bitcoin or Stacks. That's it. Actually, it's only Stacks um, when you're dealing with Bitcoin. It's like there's no competitor to Bitcoin. It's Bitcoin. And there's no yep. competitor to Stacks. It's Stacks. Yep. And just to just to talk about price action for the Alex token, um, this is based on uh, coin market cap. But uh, the Stacks token, when we when we talked about that, I remember it, it was around. I think when we first talked about it, it was like you know four or five episodes ago. Um, Stacks was trading around. No, I'm sorry. Alex was trading around. Was it was it a few pennies? Was it just a handful of pennies? I think I think so. Right it, now was, it's... it was it was I think it was like six cents. Um, okay. That was when yeah. Stacks was like fifty cents or fifty five cents. Insane. Um, don't forget Insane. about Deco, man. <laughs> oh, that is right, Deco. That's right. <laughs> Deco. <laughs> Deco is up uh, like uh, actually from March twelfth. Um, it's it's up basically a hundred percent from mm. its 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 low from its retrace. Basically, it's just like a make or die fork. Um, ah, okay. On stacks, nothing crazy. Yeah, um, I locked up my tokens. I'm, I don't know how I feel about it, but it's already done. I, I can't access it. It's over. <laughs> so if I, um, <laughs> yeah, I only I only locked up a portion of stacks just to stake it, and then the other stuff I just left it liquid, um, just just in case to see what happens. But yeah, probably locking it up at this point. If we do end up going gigabull, it could be like one of the best plays. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I hope in a few months in July. I think the fifth, July fifteenth is when it it unlocks for me. So we'll uh, we'll talk more about that when the time comes. Oh man, go away. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the uh, you brought up staking, right? So did you, so the staking is actually very interesting. When you stake stacks on the Xverse wallet, you can potentially earn on average five point five percent APY, and you get the rewards. All in BTC. Let me say yeah. that again. Let me say that again. You get all the rewards in BTC. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, 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 it's pretty sauce. Um, well, the stacks is inflationary, uh, but the stack stakers aren't getting BTC. Um, wait, the stack stakers are getting BTC. The stack right. stakers yep. aren't getting STX. The That's STX right. token is actually going to... Uh, some of the Bitcoin validators that are uh, processing the additional transactions as like an additional incentive. Um, it's pretty interesting how it works if you look into the tech. But yeah, Stacks is one of those like quote unquote real yield protocols. Um, I guess you can consider it. Um, it. It is inflationary because it's given some of the STX token to uh, some of the Bitcoin validators, but there's really not much inflation to go. Most of the tokens have been released. What is it now? Like seventy percent at least. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, what do you know about USDA? Because I did see that USDA. If you pair it with STX, um, Dico. That's from Dico? Dico. Yeah. Oh, oh USDA, that's right. USDA MakerDAO for Dico. That's right. Okay, so it's an algo. Uh, it's so it's like basically <laughs> the only stable coin over there, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so hey, that makes sense. Okay, um, then then that'll be the the stable of choice uh, in that ecosystem at this point in time. So um, what I don't like is that okay. So the wallet's amazing. The wallet's great. Xverse, I use that. Um, there is another one that's called Hero um, or Hiro, however you want to say. 
but um, I did. Yeah, that's think, the one I used. Yeah, so X First has a very. Nice, it reminds me of like a Phantom Wallet, and I loved Phantom Wallet. Um, yeah, I probably should have chose yours. Mine, mine was okay. It was, it was whatever. It's not, yeah, because I looked at the both, and I said it, uh, it looks better. It's an, it's it's pleasing just to take a look at because there's like a dark mode, and it's it's nice. Um, and I, I'm a big fan of the the Phantom Wallet, so that's why I picked this one over. Um, and so. I wanted to touch base really quick. So yes, I'm bullish on stacks. I'm locked up. I it's out of sight, out of mind. I'm not. I'm not adding more to it. I'm just gonna see what happens when it all unlocks. I'm not gonna look at the price. We'll see what happens. <laughs> um, but <laughs> that's my bet. That. Yeah, that's my bet, and uh, I'm going to just. I mean, I have no choice now. It's already locked. But I wanted to touch base on the Bitcoin ordinals really quick. So as I said earlier, ordinals NFTs on Bitcoin. Um, D gods came out with their mint the pa- I think it was on Friday and or sometime last week. So since that mint, everyone loved the entire process of how D gods uh, released it. D gods is a platform or sorry is an NFT collection that originally came from Solana. then it moved over, migrated over to Polygon and then they decided to, hey, let's get onto the Bitcoin ordinals and just start inscribing. So they inscribed around 535. Uh, D gods NFTs on on uh, on Bitcoin. So the price for the mint it sold out, right? So the price was around 0.33 BTC. Um, I actually don't have the the USD <laughs> mint, but in BTC terms, it was 0.33. Um, uh, let's say let's what am I going to say here? Um, the D gods NFT collection was sold out in under two minutes. And at this point in time, there has been zero, and it's not a good thing. It's not a bad thing, but there, there's no trading yet with the uh, with with D gods. No one has purchased the, these. It's just there's been no sales from what I see, and that right now the floor uh, price for this uh, there's only about three that's available to buy, and I could be wrong, but I think, nope, there's four that's available to buy, and the lowest price to get in. This is, is just one BTC to buy one. So that's twenty seven thousand uh, dollars a current, you know, <laughs> which is just I don't know. It's it's equals equates to like you know juicy dude. It's really crazy. It's a lot of money, but I, I guess everyone is very bullish on D guys. There's only five hundred and thirty five of these um, in the inscriptions. I th- think so. It was on block uh, Bitcoin block number seven seven six four zero eight, and the inscription. Um, numbers is in is is seventy seven thousand two hundred to seventy seventy seven thousand seven hundred. That's the that's the inscription numbers there. Uh, I mean, that's something worth to know because I think that's mainly why people buy the lower numbers because they want to. It's it's a piece of history and it's inscribed on the, you know, uh, on the blockchain and it's it's uh, you can't you can't delete it. You can't delete it. It's what's forever now. <laughs> yeah. If you look back, if you look back at the first, you know, Satoshi that with the inscription of these NFTs and these images, yeah, it's a piece of history now. So, any 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 uh, questions there, Drake? No, man. Um, uh, I, I, I I remember D Gods when it was over on Solana. Um, the dude seems to know what he's doing. He knows how to market and uh, build a pretty good NFT uh, community. I mean, I, I'm not the best at NFTs, but I, I can see he's actually doing a great job of um, building a, a community with aligned incentives. Yeah, and there's one other project. Obviously, everyone knows CryptoPunks and all that. It's the holy grail of all NFT collections. Again, my goal in life, either this bull run or the next bull run, I'm gonna, I want to own a CryptoPunk. That's I'm my gonna goal. I'm going to do it for you. Just right-click safe. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah i mean that's that's probably the easiest um but yeah there's these bitcoin punks that basically somebody who owns a bitcoin punk and this is the this is actually the the real story behind this the bitcoin uh sorry the, the crypto punk owner and i forget who but they took the entire collection and they inscribed it into you know making these ordinals right so the inscriptions range from uh the numbers range from uh, sub ten thousand, all the way up to I believe thirty five thousand in in terms wow. of the ordinal the inscription number. So 
Yeah, it's fairly low because at this point, I think it, I think on Friday we officially hit over five hundred thousand inscriptions already. So, if you decided to go down the line, if you wanted to inscribe something today, you'd probably be in around like the six hundred or the seven hundred at this point because it's rapidly growing. This ecosystem's kind of you know thriving at this point in time. Although the total volume has kind of been on the lower side because. You know, it's it's kind of hard where people. It's still it's still kind of complex to use like the Taproot wallet, Bitcoin, and um, and just I don't know. It's it's uh it's new territory for people because they're so used to using ETH, so used to using Arbitrum and Optimism and you know Phantom, where it's just tap of a button, we're done, smart contract done. Um, here it's it's you know I I I don't know. I'm looking at these Bitcoin punks for the last week and a half and i don't know if i want to pull the trigger or not i'm intrigued i know these aren't the official crypto punks because these are these have all like the gold backgrounds because it's you know bitcoin and i don't know what are your thoughts on this i know you don't you know you don't really dabble that much in nfts but you know is this bullish i i think so but i'm kind of on the fence and buying one or not I haven't really looked into it much. Um, I just know, like with the ordinals, the lower the number, the better, um, because as more NFTs are minted, they actually get a um, a higher number. So I heard the top one hundred thousand NFTs are uh, going to be the best. So I mean, punk or not, I really don't think it's going to matter in that aspect. I think what's going to matter is um the inscription number and you said punks were the first ten thousand or first twenty thousand yeah so the inscription number started at um, sub ten thousand yeah so um, i think that's yeah. going to be extremely valuable just for that reason i don't think it has anything to do with the being a crypto punk or not um, so let's talk let's talk about this really quick yuga labs right owns the ip to the crypto punks they did not give the go-ahead to this from what i've seen right but somebody took the code and took these images and migrated over to BTC without their permission. There has been no announcement or anything like that from Yuga to talk about these Bitcoin punks. Is there a, a negative stigma that is tied to this NFT collection? I mean, because how that's... do you sue someone for it? <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly I mean, right. how? How? Exactly. Exactly. And I've seen and I've seen a lot of punks migrate to different, you know iterations on several different chains and they just you know they don't they typically don't perform well and so that's that's their only reason why but but this is completely different because it's bitcoin you can't reverse it it's there forever now so do i buy one at 0.71 right now <laughs> i don't know that's a good I question know. i don't know and the reason why i'm saying this 0.71 you know hey hey abs why why are you talking in ETH terms when this is a Bitcoin ordinal, right? It's supposed to be dealt in B BTC, is it not? Well, it's a good question. Bitcoin punks, this collection on ordinals.market, um, some of these collections, if not most of them, they have a, uh, a, uh, a router where you can basically open up, they opened up uh, 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 an ETH wallet where you can unvault your BTC and it basically is, is then you're able to sell it on uh, for ETH. So you can sell it for like an ERC-20, I don't know, kind of like that. But they mainly did that the reason why is because um, ETH has a, a lot of liquidity, right? ETH, mainnet and all that. So you can basically transact your MetaMask, buy one of these with ETH, and then you can vault it and it basically goes back into your BTC vault. If that makes sense. That's the only reason why they, they allowed this to be transacted in ETH is because of the liquidity. Yeah. No, I mean, that, that, that would make sense. Um, mm -hmm. That's also like a bullish case for stacks right there. I mean, if they get an NFT marketplace on there. Um, I think they're working on right now. I just haven't looked into it uh, deep enough. I kind of just did a little uh, spray and pray type of thing over on uh, stacks. I mean, I, I didn't do much spraying because there's not much over there. But like Deco STX, um, just to see what happens. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm just bullish on Alex. I hope Alex goes up. Uh, yeah, a whole I, lot. I think I think Alex will do well. Um, it's basically like an all-in-one DeFi hub. Um, I just didn't mess with it because it, it wasn't degen enough for me. 
I'd yeah. rather I, I just chose to hold SDX, but Alex is probably going to outperform because um, it's one of the top DEXs on there. Dumb yeah. move by me, but we'll see what no, happens. No, it's not dumb at all, man. I think you're giving it a shot, and uh, STX is bullish. I believe Alex is bullish as well. Uh, I have both of them in an LP over there, but the process took me about 30 to 40 minutes to to actually get the LP going and to lock it up from start to finish. And um, I don't know. If that, I mean, you said it's going to get better, I, and I think it will. I think I was in uh, Yeah, so I was in a Twitter space this worse. morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was in a Twitter Spaces this morning, and uh, I think the Xverse uh, person that was the CEO of Xverse, the, the wallet, um, said that they're working on a lot of things to make things faster. And so, yeah, basically validates what you said earlier about maybe the Nakamoto uh, upgrade eventually on Stacks is going to help this process move along faster. Yeah, and I, I think there's one additional narrative um, that a lot of people are still fading is the China narrative. I know it's. Some people think it's overhyped, and in my opinion, I think it's a better narrative than the AI narrative, because um, I think it will actually have legs, because when China opens up the floodgates, allowing uh, crypto investors to come back in and buy, especially in Hong Kong, uh, there's going to be people um, looking at different tokens uh, in order to basically diversify, get, get out of China, get out of the, keep their money from being in there. Um, some of the coins that I really like um, that are, they seem to actually be holding up pretty well, is like uh, CFX, which is coin flux. And then you also have um, ACH, which is alchemy pay. Um, there is another one that I haven't really looked into yet, um, but it does fit the China narrative um, that I've heard. I, I don't have any details. Um, so I'm not like saying this is good coin, this is bad coin. Uh, it's called like Nervous Network, CKB. Um, haven't looked into it enough. I need to look into it more. That's what I'm planning on doing today. But on CFX, the, the bullish case for that is it's basically like China's Ethereum. Because um, over in China, they, they can't really buy any of these coins, um, mainly with the regulation and whatnot. And CFX is, I think, the only it, it it's one of the few tokens that are actually working with China and they have agreements um, and they, they already have a, a pretty tight relationship. Um, and in my opinion, that's going to be like the um, Ethereum for China. It's an EVM. So you have a couple of DeFi coins you can play on there as well. They have their own little ecosystem. It, it's nothing crazy. Um, but the technology, well, it's not an EVM. It's EVM compatible. Um, it's actually a DAG, so it's just like Phantom. Um, it does have it, two of its own chains, just like Phantom has two of its own chain. It has the Phantom chain and, and the Phantom EVM. Um, and that's the same thing with CoinFlux. The non-EVM side of CoinFlux has a lot of major partnerships uh, with the government and whatnot over in China. Um, and the EVM side, this is going to be like their China Ethereum for these um, ETH people to... Well, not ETH people, but the Chinese investors to possibly speculate on. Token price has been actually doing extremely well. Um, Alchemy Pay is similar in the China narrative uh, that it's like their fiat on-ramp. Um, it's basically just a fiat to crypto on-ramp. That's all it is. And mainly the ACH token gets appreciation as there's uh, more volume and transactions through it. Yeah, a little bit more about the China narrative. Um, I know this was about, what, two months ago, if that. Um, they they were planning to print a lot more money uh, and inject more money into the system, which is why we're, you know, coining this, the, the China narrative. Um, this is going to be bullish. And I think, uh, you know, the, 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 the team over at Crypto Banter were talking about this and how much money is going to be... Um, uh, is printed right, so it's around three hundred. Sorry, three point five trillion dollars that they have printed over the last year, bringing their M three money supply to two hundred and sixty six trillion. Crazy, um, yeah, and it's it's a lot of money to be kind of flowing around. Obviously, it dilutes the, you know, it just inflates their um, their yen, and it's just it is it's bullish because everything's going to go up, right? Yeah. Um, just like how everything goes over here, it's, you know, the, the Fed prints more money, assets across the board will go up because everyone has more money. 
to invest. Um, and so that's, that's, that's a natural way of, of inflation, um, you know, how it interacts with the actual assets across the board. And this goes for TradFi, this goes for crypto, real estate, and, and what have you. But uh, I mean, I there's another there's another project too um, that I we, I need to have more of like a, a grip on. But along with the Chinese narrative, I've seen a lot of buzz. Have you heard a lot of buzz with uh, a Star Network? Yeah, the one over at Polkadot. Haven't yeah. messed with it much. Um, Polkadot and Kusama, I would say they fit the Chinese narrative as well. Yeah, and there's groundbreaking uh, partnerships with a Star Network, and it's Sony. And it's Toyota. So, really? yes. Um, and that's just, I mean, it's 11 cents. I mean, I think it's 11 cents. Uh, I hope it's 11 cents. That's really cheap. Um, but just thinking about that, uh, these, these high end uh, brands, these household names such as Sony and Toyota, and I think there's more going to be coming down the pipeline. So, yeah, a star is that actually no. Is they have six, anything six with the government? Cents? Uh, potentially. I mean, we can talk about this on the next next one as soon as we get all of our ducks in a row. Um, more information about that. But I think at this point, I just pulled up, a, I just did a quick, because I did see a little bit buzz on, on Twitter about this. So uh, it's at six and a half cents. Um, and just looking at the partnerships, I just did a star partnerships. And literally the first things that came up was, was to, uh, Sony and Toyota. Huh. It's massive. I'd have to look at that. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh that's really what I wanted to talk about today. It was the STX um, you know, in unison, the L2 that's that's built on top of uh Bitcoin. I talked about ordinals. You talked about the uh the ARP ecosystem and how we're going to get this uh big, you know, we're all going to try to speculate what the price point's going to be, but we're going to we're going to find out in a in a few short days. Yeah, it will be interesting. Can't wait for that airdrop. That'll be fun. A nice liquidity injection. Uh, to the crypto ecosystem, maybe we will have some more um, DGen junk to talk about. Yeah, and there's a lot of things going on this week as well. Um, I th there was a list. I don't know why I, uh, I X'd it out on my end, but let me see if I can find it. So mainly, there's a lot going on every single day this week, and this is this goes for the macro. But the main thing is the 20. Uh, second which is a wednesday we're going to find out if the fed is going to increase rates or not by 25 basis points we uh, still depend on those guys uh, it moves kidding. the markets <laughs> i know <laughs> i know the i know they, they are the markets yeah so i mean if if uh we we're seeing these bank uh collapsing you know all across the board and this is the result of uh the interest rates you know hiked since last year They've been doing this for a whole year now, believe it or not. And this is why we're in a bear cycle. But as a byproduct, these banks will fail based on um, their investments, based on you know, um, you know how corrupt these bankers are, right? Because we're going to find out who they are. And so far, we have a lot of folks that, I mean, a lot of banks that have been affected by this and uh, these bank runs. So it's interesting to see that last week we have, and the Fed has decided to uh, inject more money into the system, meaning our our dollars are worth even less as we speak. And we've literally erased, within one or two weeks, we have erased all the progress that we've made since the interest rate hikes to bring inflation down to 6% since last year. So now we have inflated more, we've added more money to the, the pot, and it erased all of that progress. So we are at a point where um, a lot of things are going to be changing. I think that the banking system is, it, we're going to be seeing a lot of more banks basically either failing or getting bailed out. If they get bailed out, there's more money to be injected into the ecosystem, into the your economy. So there's a lot of moving parts, but obviously, you know, we're in DeFi, we are in crypto for a reason. This is why Bitcoin was made. And, you know, it's really important that, you know, we kind of keep our finger on the pulse in terms of understanding where we're going, right? In terms of the government and how they want to attack this problem, it's going to be a hard, <laughs> uh, it's going to be hard if they decided to con continue to increase because a lot more of these banks will fail 
and we could potentially be pushed into a recession later this year. Um, but anyways, that's another uh, another topic down the line. I just wanted to kind of kind of level set with everyone here to to you know seeing how important this uh, this Fed meeting on Wednesday will be. But yeah, just just my initial thoughts on the macro there. It's it's important stuff because it actually moves our markets and uh, it moves our investments either to the positive or the negative. So any uh, any comments no, there? Man. No, man, it, it kind of stinks. You got to wait for some talking heads to uh, determine where the market goes. But it's true. It's how it yeah. rolls. Yeah, exactly. But um, but yeah, that about wraps it up. We, uh, we, we said a lot today, and I hope that you guys like this content. Uh, please, again, like and subscribe the, uh, the channel. It really helps us grow and uh, to get this channel out to a lot of the users that are interested and curious about DeFi. So um, uh, thanks for joining, and we'll talk to you soon. Dude, oh, hit well, him with the wisdom sorry. one-liner. Yeah, you can't hit forget him. him. <laughs> Dude, this one actually fits perfect, perfect, man. This is completely random. Proverbs chapter 11, verses 14. For lack of guidance, a nation fails, but victory is won through many advisors. That's true, man. We got too many talking heads that don't have any guidance. Nation's and also, fail. And, we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's it's gonna fail. But uh, are you saying? I'm trying to read between the lines. Are you saying to buy Bitcoin? Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> There's plenty of advisors at Bitcoin. <laughs> Sounds good. That's an awesome one. But uh, appreciate you joining. Thank you uh, again, and we'll talk to you soon. Dudes, peace out, Abs. <laughs>